Hello, everybody. My name is Dave Grohl. I'm Taylor Hawkins. And we are here tonight to induct Rush into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rock and roll has forever been ensconced in mystery. Robert Johnson selling his soul to the devil that early morning that Satan knocked upon his door. The death of Paul McCartney in 1966 and the conspiracy to replace him with an exact look-alike. Elvis sightings, Jim Morrison sightings, Axl Rose sightings. <laughs> But there's one mystery that surely eclipses them all. When the fuck did Rush become cool? It was 1976 when my cool, older stoner cousin gave me my first copy of 2112. Upon first inspection, I was fascinated by the track listing. The entire side one of the album was a seven-part suite with Roman numerals and names like the Temples of Syrinx. <laughs> and Oracle, the Dream. This is far from my Kiss records with such great works of literature like Love Gun and Ladies Room. No, this was something else. This was heavy shit. <laughs> and then I saw what is perhaps the most infamous band photo of all time. Three grown men, arms crossed, standing proudly in white satin kimonos and skin-tight pants. How skin-tight, you ask? So skin-tight that you can still find the one, the only, guitar god, Alex Lifeson on cameltoe.org. <laughs> But what was inside is why we are here today. Yeah. Getty Lee's ripping bass, yeah. his incredible, unmistakable voice. Alex Lifeson's soulful, imaginative, melodic, chaotic guitar solos. And of course, fucking Neil Perk. God, come on! This guy spawned a generation of air drummers for decades to come. With his composition, craft, and technique, his drumming was songwriting. It was just as musical, just as melodic as any other instrument in the band, bringing the drums where they fucking should be to the forefront of every song. But here's the thing about Neil Peart. Not only was he the most fucking ripping drummer in the world, he wrote the fucking lyrics. Who let the fucking drummer write the lyrics? Rush did, baby. Makes no sense. Playing upwards of 250 shows a year, from day one, the band built its following the right way. No hype, no bullshit. They did it from the ground up. Without any help from the mainstream press. <coughs> Rolling Stone. <laughs> Rush, Fly By Night, Caress of Steel, 2112, A Farewell to Kings, Hemispheres, Permanent Waves, Moving Pictures, Signals, Grace Under Pressure, Power Windows, Hold Your Fire, Presto, Roll the Bones, Counterparts, Test for Echo, Vapor Trails, Feedback, Snakes and Arrows, Clockwork Angels, 45 years, over 40 million records, thousands of shows, selling out arenas all over the world. Their influence is undeniable. 
and their devoted fan base, only rivaled by the Grateful Dead. Look at you people right there, all of you right there. And their legacy is that of a band that stayed true to themselves no matter how uncool they may have seemed to anyone. I think it's safe to say that Rush are indeed a band that has balls. Yeah! Alex showed us that. Yeah. And they've always been cool. So, Consider this mystery solved. It is our honor to finally yeah. induct Rush into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah.